Now I just finished my first year of university, so I decided I'd make a small video about it. This video is just a bit of my opinion about my program and how I felt my first year went. But anyways, let's go on a little bit of an adventure straight away. So, so as one does when the semester ends and they get traumatized after an entire year, they escape to Mexico. Now the point of this entire video is to be an opinion piece on how I felt about my first year at the University of Toronto and in Ensai. The reason I'm in Mexico is because I just happened to be filming the intro after I filmed everything else and I'm on vacation. Anyways, for the rest of the video, let's go back to Canada. Before I get into this portion of the video, I need to preface one thing. I'm only in first year. A lot of these opinions that I have may completely change and I may know completely nothing about what I'm talking about. So take all that with a grain of salt. Since I'm going to be talking about 12 things that made me lock in a little too much over the last year, I decided I'm going to film it while I'm locked out completely in the outdoors. There were 12 courses that I had to take in the first year of Ensai and I liked 100% of them 70% of the time and the other 30% of the time... Yeah, let's get into it then. Now, if there's any course that makes sense to start off with, it's Calculus 1 and Calculus 2. These are taught in the first and second semester respectively, and these courses go by fast. By the third week of first semester, I was ready to beef with Newton. It took a little bit of time to adjust, but by the end, I can confidently say Calculus ended up becoming one of my favorite courses. I was a little frustrated with the way that it was taught, especially because of how fast paced and how many proofs there were in the course. But after the initial blunt of Delta Epsilon, you start to gain an appreciation for the purer things in life, like loppy towels. We call it Calculus 1 and Calculus 2, but the actual truth of the matter is, between those two courses, you actually get pretty deep into Calc 3. Because by the end of second semester in Calculus 2, we were going into vector calculus, Lagrange multipliers, and all that other Calc 3 nonsense. Many of us liked it, including me. Now, I think it's time we get into like the side quests of Ensai. There are these three courses that I like to call the complete... Okay, this guy's not saying that I like to call the complete three side quests. That's ESC 103, Phi 180, and MSC 160. The first two are in the first semester, the second one is in the second semester. Phi 180, or I guess our physics course, is literally just a continuation of what you learned in high school, and nothing else gets built upon that. There's a pendulum project, which is like, sure, kind of cool. Wow, my saw is dull as frick, like, wow. And a really bad saw. Special lab project. That thing is kind of mid. It, it, um, we stressed about it more than we should have, and now I just look back at it like, did that really happen? And then ESC 103 are also kind of mid. It's like an introduction to vectors. It's not real linear algebra. And that was kind of just like, it was a complete meme, and it was taught by a, by a not cool dude. So yeah, that, that, they're like the complete side quests. For some reason, I completely forgot to talk about MSC 160. So here I am after editing the video and realizing that I completely forgot about a subject talking about it now. MSC 160 is like the chemistry course that we take in second semester. Anyways, that's MSC 160 and back to being outside because recording indoors isn't that cool. All right, so now that we've been over the necessary side quests, let's go over two courses that are fairly important in my opinion. And those are our two programming courses ESC 180 and ESC 190. ESC 180 is taught in Python. ESC 190 is primarily taught in C with some Python added. So the geese back there don't want to shut up, so you guys are probably hearing them. First semester is fairly easy because it's a genuine just introduction to Python and introduction to programming course. It doesn't go very deep. You don't even get into object-oriented programming. You'll be completely fine in the first semester. However, second semester, since I was given such false confidence from the first semester being taught in Python, my native language that I am very comfortable with. The jump to C and learning data structures and algorithms in C personally kicked my butt. I'm about to smoke gum in my face now. I didn't realize that the fire would just turn. Bleh, bleh. Overall, ESC 190 and ESC 180, pretty decent courses and pretty necessary. Now, I really hope this angle works because this is incredibly uncomfortable, but I think it might look kind of funny, especially considering I'm going to be talking about Mat 185, the linear algebra of the second semester. As I said before, ESC 103 was kind of a meme. Mat 185, not a meme. Not a meme. This course, at least for me, was the worst thing I've ever gone through. I got clapped so freaking hard, I wrote the final today, and I want to cry. When I talked about I didn't like this 30% of the time, this I didn't like 100% of the time. I think linear algebra can be really cool when you apply it. However, Math 185 was more about the actual math stuff and more into the three theory, 
which I personally struggled a lot with. I had a lot of friends who actually liked this course a lot. Anyways, let's go cover a different set of courses. Let's switch up the angle here because now we're going to talk about Praxis 1 and Praxis 2. However, I'm actually not going to cover these two because most likely what's going to happen is a lot of people are going to click this video who are going to be going into NSI, whether it be this year or later on in the future, and they're definitely going to have questions on what is Praxis. However, having just finished two of them, I'm still asking myself that question. So I don't have any answers for you. What is Praxis? I don't know. I still don't have any answers. I'm still trying to figure it out. So good luck figuring it out. And if you figure it out, please tell me as well. Now I feel like I should talk about one other course before I get into the really juicy one and that's ESC 159 or our circuits course. You learn the fundamentals of circuits, both AC and DC. You get into some transient stuff. You learn about complex numbers within the... I don't know why I got within this bush. I thought, just thought this would be a nice position to record. Oh God, there's so many bugs. This was an awful idea, but I'm committed. Back to ESC 159. The AC and DC power stuff was pretty cool. Overall, I like the course and I like the labs a lot. The labs are very practical and they have you building some pretty cool circuits. And I think that was the best part of the course. It's pretty cool. And I honestly think the course was very solid and stands to be a great first year course. I'm gonna leave this bush now. This was an awful idea. Fire is kind of dying out here and I don't think I'm gonna stoke it up anymore. It is getting a bit more dark. However, I still have one more course to co cover and that's Civ 102. This was my favorite course. And honestly, I could yap about this one forever. I loved everything taught in it. I loved the projects that we had, the, the bridge project that we had to do. I love the teacher, Bent the Goat. The bridge project that we built was one of the best experiences ever. Although that Civ Bridge weekend was some of the most I've ever worked in a row without sleep, it was beautiful. Even though the bridge failed miserably in my case, the whole thing of you learning all of this throughout the entire semester and then applying it was just so rewarding and I found the course overall so rewarding. And honestly, I think I'd say about Civ is in first semester you take it and you take it with the rest of the courses. If you don't enjoy Civ Bridge week after the fact, you'll know if NSI is for you or not. When I went through it, that's when I knew this program was for me completely. Because although it was hell, I enjoyed every moment of it in some stupid masochistic way. And even when the bridge failed miserably and it was kind of a shame, I was still proud of what I made that weekend. And honestly, I, I, I keep reminiscing about that course and I, and I yearn for the day I have something like that again. I'm gonna now look into the lake and ponder life because now I'm going through an existential crisis about why can't I go back to those days. Now, if you couldn't tell already, I'm trying to make this video as confusing as possible to when I'm filming everything. So uh, right now we're in the car and it's the night before, I think my first clip in the video is filmed. I'm not exactly sure yet because I haven't actually filmed anything. Oh, shut up, bro. Um, I haven't actually filmed anything yet. As I dive to the gym and just have a camera just sitting in front of me, I'm kind of just talking to it. Like none of this is scripted. Like this is genuinely how I feel about uh, the program and how I feel my year at UFT, my first year at UFT went. My overall experience has been super positive. I don't think I can agree with the whole U people at UFT don't have a life and it's just studying. I lived my life very solidly throughout this first year. And I guess it's a big reason why I'm trying to make this video is because I'm trying to I'm trying to showcase that that's possible. Doing a doing something that's academically this difficult while still maintaining a life and maintaining like good healthy well-being, I want to showcase as possible for everyone. Because I don't see myself as anyone who's extraordinary in any real sense. I think I'm fairly average. I just manage my time. Uh, I do what I need to do when I need to do it. And that's about it. And I think that's like a huge part of anything difficult in life. Like now at this point, I'm just starting to yap, but that's kind of okay, I guess. As I arrive into the gym parking lot, I've just been yapping at a camera that's sitting on my dash for the last, I don't know, 10 minutes. So who knows what this makes out in the video because I haven't scripted any of this. I'm just fucking yapping. At this point, I don't even know if my phone has enough battery to record all of this. So we're doing another interesting recording job right now. I have the camera sitting like on my dash in such a position that like it can definitely fall over if I make a turn too fast. So I'm gonna be driving like a grandma. So I'm just freestyling it. 
Oh, this is the part of the video that I purposely left kind of completely unscripted because at some point I wanted to like have genuinely what I think at the moment expressed because I feel like that's a big important part of this. Now, with this being off the top of the head, I hope I get what I'm trying to say across. I got rejected from the program that I initially really wanted to get into. I got rejected from the school that I thought I really wanted to go to. And then I was left with like like this this option, which at this point I know was like perfect for me. Like every all the all the stars aligned even in a way that I didn't initially want them to, but they all aligned in the perfect way, which I realize now. But when at this time last year, the anxiety of going into university had like kind of become came to a point where it was a lot it was overwhelming and my end goal with this is to try to bring comfort to people like on my procrastinating time i won't call it free time it is procrastinating time because it's kind of exam season i'll go look at like the U of T reddit and i'll go and see the posts from the people who recently got accepted and they're like and they post about like, oh is a lack of life really true? Like, at U of T, is, does everyone just study? And is that just everything? Is it just that miserable? And what I'm trying to do here is make it seem like it isn't. Because in my honest opinion, it's not miserable. I have never been happier in life. And that's coming from a genuine spot. I went into university expecting it to get worse. But honestly, even though I've never worked so hard in my life, I've never had so many things to do, I've never had such little free time. Somehow, in such a harsh environment, I found a community and I found a place I kind of call home. And I found stuff that I'm passionate about. And with all of that combined, I'm happy. Now I wish that 12-ish minute yap session was somewhat entertaining and maybe even a little bit helpful. I don't actually know what I'm doing with making this video. I kind of just talked to the camera for most of it and I came up with a really dodgy script and two weeks later, it's kind of complete, I think. Whoa, where are you trying to go, Milo? Huh? Where are you trying to go? If I was to rate this year out of like seven, I think I'd give it like a 6.9. Very close to perfect, but not exactly the, why are you trying to leave me, Milo? Milo, no, 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 you don't, okay, he's gone. Thanks for watching. I might make more videos, I might not. Hope you guys all have a great day. <laughs>